today, let's take a look at the Browning Sweet 16. And maybe we can also talk a little about what's become of the 16 gauge round. The Sweet 16 is of course a classic Browning A5 autoloader. Its most distinguishing and recognizable feature is the early style Browning humpback or squared receiver. The other notable feature is the gold plated trigger found only on the Sweet 16s. On the left hand side of the receiver you'll find engraved Sweet 16. Just below you'll see an engraved likeness of John Moses Browning. This engraving is unique and found only on the Sweet 16. The standard A5s, even those chambered in 16 gauge, lack this enhancement. This example was produced in Belgium. The A5s produced in Belgium are considered somewhat more collectible than the A5s built in countries like Japan. Don't misunderstand, the Japanese made Brownings are extremely fine shotguns. It's just that from a collector's perspective, the Belgian made A5s are a tad more sought after, especially the Sweet 16s. There's a lot of great videos that go into detail and history about these Browning A5s. What you don't usually hear is what actually happened to the popularity of the 16 gauge, when for the most part, it's the perfect round for upland game hunting. In the early years of the 20th century, well at least here in the US, the 16 was considered the gentleman's gauge. This distinguished it from the 12 gauge, which was the preferred gauge used by market gunners, deer hunters, and the military. The idea behind the 16 gauge was that it was more intended for hunting upland game birds like quail, pheasants, and grouse. For the typical bird hunter, the 16 was the most logical of all the gauges. The 16 gauge's bore diameter is almost exactly two-thirds of an inch. An ounce of shot in a true 16 gauge bore creates a shot column of almost perfect dimensions for producing an ideal pattern for bird hunting. The 16 gauge's loss of popularity is usually blamed on the originators of skeet shooting. When the rules for skeet were drawn up, it was ruled that the game would officially be shot with four gauges the 12, 20, 28, and 410. And that pretty much orphaned the 16 gauge. You might not think this would have had such an impact, but the course of events went something like this. With the ever-growing number of upland game and waterfowl regulations that combined with strict bag limits, shotgun shooters were pretty much left with trap and skeet if they wanted to do much shooting. Trap, of course, is a 12 gauge game. The popularity of trap and skeet shooting spread pretty fast. It wasn't too long before manufacturers were focusing more on guns and ammunition tailored for skeet and trap requirements. The 16 gauge has spiraled into a slow decline ever since then. Recently, Browning's made an effort to bring back the Sweet 16. A few weeks ago I had the opportunity to look at one of these new Brownings. I'll admit they're pretty nice. But for me, they just don't have the feel and appeal these older A5s have. Personally, I'm hoping the new Sweet 16 just might fuel some renewed interest in the 16 gauge round, which is already on the edge of slipping into obscurity, very much like the 28 gauge round. I hope this renewed interest happens, because the 16 gauge is just too useful as a hunting round to just let it fade away. In spite of all that, the 16 gauge is still my preferred shotgun for bird hunting. I couldn't begin to count all the dove, quail, and chuckers I've taken with this sweet 16 over the years. I'm someone who looks forward to bird season every year. This browning will be my shotgun of choice when it's time to head out. I admit, I really like my 12 and 20 gauge shotguns, but there's just something about being in the field on opening day with this classic 16 gauge shotgun loaded with shot shells designed for the very game I'm after. For me, it just doesn't get any better than that.